Yo, I saw a picture of myself when I was eight years old the mm. other day. And I was like, dude, she was singing in front of all those people at eight years old. And this is me <laughs> playing with some fucking Legos, yo. Playing with fucking Legos. <laughs> I don't, I don't mind doing it either or. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just uh, getting ready for answers. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Well, uh, without further ado, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. This is another episode of the Scoped Exposure podcast. Aaron's already Scoped waving exposure. to all the people at home. What's up, fools? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be bringing on uh, the vocalist of Jesus Peace and the bassist of Nothing, Mr. Aaron Hurd. Thanks for joining me on the show, man. What's up, y'all? Thanks for having me. Yeah. You know. Um, you know, as we were, you know, we're into season two now, which for me is like anything between a hundred and two hundred podcast episodes. And when I was planning for oh my this God. upcoming season, you were definitely a guest that I've wanted to hit and um and have come on the show. So, you know, this is one that I can like uh check off the, you know, top ten list of of future guests that I want to hit up. So I really appreciate you um making some time for me today, man. Yo, anytime. I'm a little elusive, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. I know, uh, you know, when Aaron went and I were trying to set it up, it was like some people prefer to do it in the evening. Some people like sleep in to 2 p.m. And you're like, no, nah, like, let's do it in the morning. So we're kind of start- starting the day off right with the podcast. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So Aaron, um, obviously, we're going to be chatting about uh, Jesus Peace and um, right. going to tie into some things on nothing and some things about you the musician but before we talk about any music things it's a required thing here on the podcast to check a bev so it's tradition for the guests to go first so tell the people at home you're going to be sipping on for the episode you know to be honest i forgot my beverage in the (laughs) (laughs) we literally spent five minutes of you like getting the beverage oh no i'll be right back hold on no that's fine (laughs) that's so funny well I, I don't know if I should uh, check my Bev. Aaron, you can still hear Hold me, on. right? You got the AirPods. Yeah, I, I, I'm talking and, and, and chatting and hearing <laughs> loud and clear. No, it's all good. It, it's always that thing where, like, we literally spent a couple minutes of you getting ready. So I thought we were ready to go. So I apologize for just uh, jumping into it without um, having the beverage no, in hand. No, 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 no. This is my fault. I do this to all of my friends. They're always waiting for me. And I'm like, all right, I'm ready. And then I forget all of the shit that I'm supposed to have in the first place. Hey. <laughs> He's back. Oh, okay. I Did I see two? Sorry. I'll, I'll let you properly introduce it. Yeah, I might have gotten two. Oh, okay. <laughs> to make up for missing the, the first one? I just ran into my kitchen to grab something. But uh, yeah, I will be drinking a black cherry white claw seltzer. Hard seltzer. Matching the, the, the shirt to a degree. I think that's a nice pick. Yeah, I do what I can, really, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, and what's the, the second one? Or or do you want to ch- uh, showcase that once you finish the White Claw and get to the second yeah, one? Yeah, we can uh, we can put it in the sequel a little bit later. Oh, we okay. Le- leave them with anticipation sure, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I love that. You know it's there. You know it's coming. You just don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's like forcing the people to like get through that hour mark of the episode to, to see what Aaron's right. going to check next. That's you a great idea. You ever see those idea. like stupid videos? yeah it's like watch what happens next (laughs) straight up um so aaron i don't know how familiar with the uh the show you are but we actually have a couple like beverage sponsors on the show so it's like um you know i i need a a second little caffeine boost so i'm going to be drinking um some dirty chai uh made from our friends from say when so canadian chai concentrate company so what i love about it is that it's a one-to-one mix so I'm doing it ice. We got the mason jar with some ice. Pour this sucker right. halfway. And then right. without spilling all, all the expensive podcast equipment, pour some oat milk in there. Yo, you know that that chai is one of my favorite drinks. Nice dirty chai, ice. 
Yes. Yeah. It's it's the move. It's a game changing coconut milk in there. Oh, dude, cocoa <laughs> milk is great. Yeah. So just within a couple seconds, yeah, I got gone. like a great tasting beverage ready to go with uh incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Is, Tell um, the niggas to send me some too. Shit, I dude, need some I will though. absolutely get you set up with some. I mean it. Tell the how at me. I need to be chied up over here. Um, what's the um? Is that black cherry flavor for the white claw? That's your go-to when it comes to white claw flavors. Yeah, I'd say that the black cherry is, is probably a go-to, but I think it's because it's reminiscent of like those freeze pops. You know what I mean? The long oh, free, freeze pops. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It tastes exactly like a melted one. And mm. at that point, it's like nostalgic. It's beautiful. You know, it takes you back to like summertime as a totally. child, you know. Yeah. I, I never I never thought I would hear someone <laughs> describe a White Claw as being a nostalgic kind of flavoring. So that's very interesting. Hey, you know, the world's a crazy place, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. All right. Well, Aaron, cheers to you, my guy. Very excited to do this podcast with you. Um, glad that you, you know, had some bevs on deck ready to go. I actually yeah, have to I always um, come prepared. That's good. I um I'm hoping that this podcast gets big enough that we can be have a background of just fridges that's just filled with all these different beverages, and I can just grab oh. anything on deck ready to go. Um so We'll have to we'll have to wait and see if that grows to that point. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. So so Aaron, any new guests that I have here on the show, I always ask them kind of the same intro question. Um, I just like to get a little bit of context about how they got into heavy music, and I know that you've done a handful of interviews, so you've done this question multiple times. So if you want to do like the condensed version, that's cool. But yeah, just right. tell me some of like the formative moments for you growing up, where like the first time you heard uh, like a you know, a drum build up. Like heavy like, shit. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Break that down. What that meant for you. All right. I got a couple times that I remember this shit happening. Right. Sure. So, uh, for one, Tony Hawk pro skater to anthrax and public enemy. Yes. Turn it up. Wild man shit. I was like, this is wild. This is awesome. You know what I mean? Also super into Lincoln park when I was younger, mm -hmm. I had a cousin who had like a, a Walkman or some shit. I was like, you gotta check this out. And at the time I was just like, rap and rock. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> so I was like super dialed in on that shit. And then from there, like I would dip my toe in like little like new metal stuff, but it never actually stuck. It wasn't like a part of my like myself, really. It just like, you know, music wasn't even really like a driving force in my life. I was like a, you know, I'd skateboard around town, fucking run around, do whatever the hell but sure it wasn't until like high school or something like i got a little more into punk music around like eighth ninth grade just because like water i mean i didn't i didn't really like the rap that was out around the time you know hanging out with skateboarders you fall into other shit you know what i mean but it didn't start clicking until like a couple of my friends brought me to like a couple of like metalcore shows out in the burbs of pa and i just saw like everybody marching and shit and like acting crazy i was like whoa <laughs> this is wild you know what i mean totally um but i'd say yeah about like high school then and then i started like asking around and then like finding shows in my area and just before i knew it it was like uh, i tried to put all my time into doing that you know what i mean yeah i lost your video for a uh, second there yeah dave is calling me oh okay <laughs> sorry no that's i got a text from I want to be on the phone. I just got to text them real quick. Yo, I'm doing a podcast for the band. Can you chill? <laughs> All right. Good to go. Yeah, sick. Sorry about that. No, that's all good. I, I've I've had other people take phone calls, had uh, Amazon deliveries in the middle of the podcast. So, <laughs> you know, we, we just we just keep rolling with it. Um, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, but I, I think that is interesting because I think a lot of people do get, you know, Tony Hawk. Lincoln Park, two very prominent things in just not only music, but just subculture that really um, put people on to like what heavy music could be. Right. But I think right, right. Um, at, at least for me, like Tony Hawk three was the Tony Hawk game that really put it on and uh, Lincoln Park totally in that same vein. But I think at that time it felt yeah. so unattainable from like a local level. So you feel like it's right. like this thing that you're just like, oh, these are like rock stars. You know, you see the slip. Right. It's like, you see... 
yeah, you're like, how how could little old you know Spencer in Canada do that, or or Aaron in in uh, in Philly? But then when you go to a local level, you're like, oh, people can write this heavy of music and have some kind of reaction, but it's in a garage, right. it's in someone's basement. So, um, yeah. So well, that's it, what fucked me up about it too, man. To be honest, because. I've always felt like I was like a, a music video kid. You know what I mean? You watch shit ton of music videos. You're like, damn, I wish I was fucking rocking like that or right. some shit. You know what I mean? Like, but for it to be accessible like that, it totally flipped the switch. Hell, I didn't even care about bigger bands for a while. Like, I only cared about bands that were in my area, like purpose. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah, yeah, like it, it's it's back in the days with the YouTube algorithms when it wasn't just like you watch a Slipknot video and then everything recommended to you is Slipknot. It was like, if you watch yeah. Slipknot, here's like all the other new metal, new metal bands that are like closely related. Right, right. Yeah. But like rabbit was, hole was easy to fall down. <laughs> absolutely. It's not just like you watch one thing and then like, it's just pushing, pushing only that content. Um, but right. yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it's interesting to hear that, you know, once you found <laughs> it on a local level, it's like, Oh, I give a fuck about this way more than I care about like Corey Taylor per se, you know. But now it's crazy like, yeah. to even flip the switch. Now, like you guys doing stuff with like Not Fest is like now you're like a you know an arm's reach away from that man. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I don't really know what's up with them if they're gonna bring us on the fest or something. But they're they've been creeping around the IG. Slub mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Notch is creeping around the Instagram. <laughs> No, nah, I think it just the not fest joint. They've been like even not even just us, but they comment on like a lot of like bands and our ethos, like in our our shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, we'll fucking pull the trigger already, dude. You know what I mean? Like, this is where all the hot shit's at, anyways, bro. All that other shit's watered down, yo. Totally, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I love that idea. All of these like, sick ass bands. Yeah, just like the whoever's running the IG for not fest, and you're just like, yo, like, what do we need to do to make something happen? <laughs> Just harass them in the DMs for a while. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I know you're not one of the original nine. Like, like, tell me what's yeah. going on and uh, let's make it count. Um, I just hit the chat. Look, cut the shit, man. <laughs> let's play some music. <laughs> Yo, get me on stage. Yeah, dude, that's so funny. That's um, how you book a show right there. Mm-hmm. Huh? You just harass <laughs> not fast in the DMs. Um, okay, so I know... Um, uh, you know, the origins of Jesus peace. I don't know how much you want to go from like the day one kind of thing. Um, what, yeah. what, what I do want to hit on, um, and this comes from someone that like archives shows, uh, very similar to Sonny. And, yeah. you know, I think it's safe to say that Jesus peace is probably within the top three bands that Sonny has filmed of all time. And, uh, what's crazy is just to see that growth for you guys, um, kind of intent, like I've only been able to see you guys once, uh, live, which was wild. It was 2019, but I feel so closely connected to your band just through all the videos that he has done. And then it was only, um, somewhere, uh, you know, in the, in the midst of, uh, the height of the pandemic last year, where like, you know, you're just bored and you're looking up videos. I found a video on your, I think it's your personal Facebook where it's like Jesus pieces, like maybe first show ever and you guys are playing like yeah. a song in, in a garage, garage huh? yeah and and like to my knowledge like you know obviously there's not the crazy responses that you would see in a lot of those videos now so like maybe just talk to me about how you know having someone in your local sphere archiving literally the origin of your band to what it is now um how how, how has that affected and just like um you know made you guys think about how to operate as a as a you know an entity now well uh to give you some background on that show before i started on Please, the answer yeah. <laughs> uh, that was actually anthony's garage uh our bassist anthony okay he used to throw shows there from time to time and a bunch of bands had dropped off the show and we didn't even have a fucking name yet we were just like <laughs> yeah we got a couple of these songs let's fucking play it yeah right so we did you know and i remember like even now watching it it sounds so fucking heavy like for real you know what i mean like i hear the slam and i'm like oh hell yeah but <laughs> it looks so like you can tell like this the synergy's not there yet like i look so awkward just like bobbing around like fuck yeah you know what I mean? but i uh i think having these videos from the beginning like just from the top 
it it's great because you're able to see like okay this is what can change about our live show Mm -hmm. i watch it and i'm like i hate this part about this Mm -hmm. so i always like try to be more conscious about little things you know it's like ballerina dancers are dancing in front of a mirror for a reason so they can pick it apart their totally. movements you know what i mean even those tiny intricacies that they hate about what they're doing you know it's it's there to perfect it and sunny has definitely been that mirror for us and not just a mirror but a fucking ollie oop and a half dude because everybody has watched these videos you know thanks to him so mm-hmm. always love the sunny but personally i fucking hate going back and watching those videos <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah yeah just because I pick myself apart so much, I'm just like right as yeah, any musician yeah. would do. Of course, but like now, a lot of the shows are, for one, early on, we're like just awesome to see all of our friends coming together and just like the community around the earlier part of Jesus Feast was really, really great. Mm-hmm. Uh, hella supportive, you know, even from people I didn't know that well. You know, when we started up, and just everybody in the our area just was like. Hell yeah, you know. Right. And it's very rare that that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's always it, some stupid divide. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I think it's like, it's very easy to run to like, oh, like live videos are for you to go and look at that cool like stage diver mosh move that you did. But I think, you know, the value, like I always say the value of live sets is almost like immeasurable because like you can break it down to like, you know, everything from like, like you were saying, like a band can look at like, Mm, maybe we should like slow this breakdown um when we play it live versus on the recording or maybe we like you know add a break here or maybe we change these songs around or like let's definitely not do this again but then there's like the fact of you know archiving the people that are going to these shows and maybe get on stage and do vocals and they're like oh who's this person in this band maybe they start the next like big metalcore band or right whatever right it is. So I think it's just interesting to, um, you know, I've always, I've always had people that, you know, when I first was starting out, you know, like I was just filming whatever I could locally. And, you know, people would always at some times be like, oh, like, well, maybe don't film this show because it's like only a few people here or whatever it is. But like, I think it's so important to like capture every, every moment of that band because then you see the true story arc. And, and like you said, like Sonny and, and those videos are kind of a mirror um and and maybe they're not important like at the time um as far as like posting it but it's just like the overall legacy of a band like you know being able to like showcase like this is you know jesus peace is one of those bands that's been archived so much it's like kind of safe to say that like almost the majority of like the 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 huge moments of that band are are archived kind of forever if that makes sense 100 percent, yeah Definitely. And we're definitely grateful for that. And honestly, I feel insanely lucky because I'll I'll be able to look back on these things. You know what I mean? And my kid even will be able to look back on these things and be like, yo, my dad was pretty fucking whack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, um, yeah, that's definitely like something yeah, I want to touch on. Like Corey dad. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely something I want to touch on later in the episode. But I think it is wow that you can be like, it's not just like, hey, like, here's a music video that your dad did. It's like, here's, like, over 100 sets of your dad, like, playing this music. It's like, what? Like, wh- why is there yeah, so God many? Forbid, <laughs> yeah, God forbid anything ever happens to me, man. Sonny's going to have so much wild shit to send my kid. <laughs> and just even, like, him filming me, like, running around Japan and Australia like a psycho, man. Like, mm-hmm. The kid's going to be like, dude, my dad was a fucking idiot. <laughs> Um, out of all the stuff that has been captured on film for Jesus piece, is there one specific that you're like really happy that, uh, you know, got archived properly, whether like Sonny filmed it or someone else. Yeah. Like, what, what's your favorite like, Jesus piece moment? Dude, That's the a big Cody question, moment. But... First, the Cody moment for sure is like <laughs> probably one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me right. because it wasn't planned at all i didn't even know that that girl could do vocals i thought she was just gonna yell little girl yell i let everyone do vocals usually i don't care i get like a big old breath <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sure. rest up for a second you know everybody else gets pumped up you know everybody has fun but like that even blew me the fuck away like i stopped dead in my tracks and looked at her like yo 
you know? And yeah. that's She'd... something that I, like, if I told that story to people, for one, it would sound like I was like gloating or some stupid shit like that. But yeah. also like it would, it wouldn't even be anywhere near uh, as accurate as, as the actual video. You know totally. what I mean? You sound like and a wild man. Like, it, what do you mean it, to like a little girl got on stage at a yeah, festival with thousands me and of all people my friends and hyped up everybody up? I'm screaming, and then we bring out this eight year old girl, and she's going crazy. And <laughs> we'd be like, "What the fuck are you talking about, dude?" In like a coffee shop or some stupid shit. Like, yeah. Do you, you gotta, do you know if um because I because I think I started following her on Instagram and you know she's right. she was like playing bass and teaching herself that like do you know yeah. have you connected with her or like heard of anything you know obviously like some people have their viral moment and they take it and, and make it this big thing and she's so young so it's you almost like don't want that for her like you're like you're still figuring yourself out as a, as a person but i'm i'm curious how how often you chat with her or or keep in touch oh me and her dad are actually really good friends we play chess together and shit <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. That's this is sick. His old head cast, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's an old black dude. He's in the punk and shit. He's the man. He uh fucking he's like just the old head, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's his daughter. She's in the punk because he's in the punk, you know, and she plays bass and all that other shit just you know, because she really, really likes the music. She loves this shit. I've been seeing her around since she was really, really tiny, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh when the opportunity arose, I was like, Oh hell yeah, why not? You know what I mean? Uh <laughs> But even after that, we see each other. You know, yeah. It's all love. You know, I still talk to Kaz sometimes. We bust I, up some food, get a couple of drinks, sing right. some karaoke. Yes. I, I can't believe like her going to school like the next day or the next week or whenever it is. They're just <laughs> telling that. And all our friends are like, there's no way. And then they're like going on a hate five six and it's like, yo, Cody's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I saw a picture of myself when I was eight years old the mm-hmm. other day. And I was like, Dude, she was singing in front of all those people at eight years old. And this is me playing with some fucking Legos, yo. Playing with fucking Legos. <laughs> totally, man. It's like, this oh. This rocking the fucking stage. Right. Yeah. And I think that's so, <laughs> like, it's, it's A, it's like a cool, like, thing that, that you guys did and Cody did. And it became viral, like, through Sunny and, you know trying to bug yeah. Ellen to have her on the show and all that shit. But I think that is Did so Did that ever crucial. actually happen? No, I don't think so. You know, I think... Oh, um, boo, Ellen sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a missed opportunity Ellen. for Fuck sure. Ellen. For her, for sure. Um, but I think that is so Fuck crucial Ellen. for, like, you know, young kids just to even be in those, like, experiences to, like, you know, watch these crazy live sets of bands and be able to, like, even partake in it in such a small way, I'm sure it will have lasting right. impacts for that person. Yo, know, it's even cool because like the kids who couldn't make it to the show because they're too young, they can still see and be in the fucking mix. You know what I mean? Totally. Like it, it keeps that avenue open for the people who are going to miss it, you know? And that's really cool. Some people hate that. You know what I mean? And I think that's stupid. Mm-hmm. Are, are you playing video games like- right now? No, yes, I am. Okay. I am playing video games. <laughs> I just know that but, there's gonna be people commenting on the podcast, like, "What's Aaron doing playing video?" I'm totally cool. Like, you're holding this conversation. I'm gonna stop in a second. That. I promise. I just have to get like fucking four hundred more souls real quick. That's fine. I gotta buy Ludwig's Holy Blade. This shit is important, <laughs> man. I can't believe a podcast guest is like, "Can five more minutes, Spencer? Like, for me to play this video game <laughs> before I have to get back to it." <laughs> Uh, Spencer, I love my video games, bro. dude. I I respect. Um, you know, f- little factoid before we get back to into Jesus piece stuff, but um, I don't think I would be in doing videos and like all of that without like Halo and video games of that nature. Yeah, yeah. Video and shit because of Halo. Yeah. Um. So there's this thing called Machinima. Which is essentially yeah. making videos. I know Machinima. Okay, yeah, you're familiar. So you probably watched like Red versus Blue growing up. Yeah, you're. In. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know about Red versus Blue. So I watched that like religiously. One to find out how to do it. Bought a capture card device for my uh, for my computer and like would literally meet people in matchmaking and being like, "Yo, I'm making this zombie movie. Will you be my friend?" And uh, you know, no shit. In, yeah. So it's buried. Maybe oh, I'll. That- 
I'll, I'll do an episode where I like go through uh, some of those old videos, yeah. but like literally without being able to um, play around with that game and make videos, like I probably like, I think I would be into hardcore because again, like, sorry, I've told this story multiple times on the podcast, but like, it's not like without Halo 2's like um, soundtrack with like Steve Vai's guitar solos and Breaking Benjamin and Hoobastank and all that kind of shit. I don't think that was all on Halo. Mm-hmm. Halo 2. You know, I didn't even like recognize that shit at the time. Like that was a anything near my like my musical taste so i guess it just went right over my head that's crazy yeah but you're just like like you can't name another first person shooter game that had like crazy guitar solo music in the in the main soundtrack right i i guess outside of like doom but like doom's a beast of it of its own first person shooter you said yes (laughs) um like Call of yeah. Duty or any of those game franchises or like here's the cinematic yeah, nah. like movie shit that you would expect. I but... was going to say DBZ had like fire ass solos all the time. Oh, that's That's true. not a first person shooter by yeah. any means. Yeah. But they were always ripping. <laughs> all right, I'm done playing video games. Okay. Spencer, I swear to God. No, I, I wasn't trying to call you out or anything like that. Uh, but it was uh, I think it was fun. You know, got to talk a little video games as well. Um, yeah. So I know as, you know, you were bringing up uh, you just having a, a kid like very, very recently. Congrats on that, by yeah. the way. Um, Thank you very much. Shout out, Leo. Yes. Best dude in the world. <laughs> um, yeah. How's, how's that been going for you? Because I know like that's a, you know, if, if that's not a huge life change, I don't know what is. But yeah, how has that been uh, yeah. going for you in your life? It's been incredible, honestly. Mm-hmm. What's up, Kina? How's it going? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? You're on the you're on the podcast. Yeah. You're on the podcast. Um, it's uh, it's been really really awesome to be honest. Like, I I've, I've been like ripping and running for the last like six years of my life. You know what I mean? I haven't really cultivated my home life at all. Mm. So to like finally for one get sat down by the pandemic and like total like you're back in society, bitch. Like immediately, you know what I mean? But also to you know be helping somebody come into the world you know what i mean it's insane Mm -hmm. but it's it's a cool change because i mean if this wasn't happening i'd probably just be partying like incessantly and being irresponsible you know what i mean but this has honestly put shit in perspective for me in a way that i i never would have figured out for myself you know what i mean totally that and it's like Every day something new is happening with this dude. He's always doing something crazy. Mm. There's never a dull moment. So it's not like I'm even bored anymore. I'm just like, <laughs> I have like another drunk roommate to take care of or like bandmate. And he's just like, a couple of years out. old. It's, yeah, he's stumbling <laughs> around, fucking throwing up, mumbling, shit. Like, I, it's cool, man. And, I don't think I've ever heard someone comparing a newborn to like taking care of uh, a, a, like an irresponsible bandmate. But I love that. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, touring with nothing, you'll figure that shit out quick. But he's like a fifth member of nothing, essentially. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think like the the timing, at least for you, is really interesting. Because like you were saying, like Jesus Peace was a band that like toured relentlessly, got an insane amount of opportunities all around the world. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, everyone kind of got you know, put in time out, so to speak, in those first few months. And, uh, and you know, yeah. like that all, like, I'm sure, you know, in a separate timeline, as far as like, trying to navigate doing that while still like being as active as you were, that might have like proved right. some difficulty. So it's interesting, the timing of all of those things. Um, a, right. qu- a question I had was like, because I think hardcore you know, a lot of people have come on here and, and talked about how hardcore has like um, taught them like different life skills or just life lessons or, you know, put things into perspective through, you know, the community that they're a part of. So I'm curious if through all of this, you know, first couple of years of being a parent for the first time, has the, has there been anything in hardcore that has like helped you with, you know, being being a dad? <laughs> just i mean not kind of I, I guess like in a sense of just like taking the initiative to get things done as far as like mm. uh unconventionally like uh 
finding ways to solve problems instead of just always uh, going the regular route. Mm. I don't know. Like, uh, honestly, no, not really. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I want to add something nice, but I I don't think that, you know, the last however many years I spent dedicating my time to this shit, like, has really helped me much in fatherhood. If anything, it's Mm. all the things I ran away from touring and acting crazy Mm, i see that's the stuff you need to confront to be a better parent you know what i mean to do the things you need to do for your family yeah so like at least for me personally in my personal experience is a lot of escapism as opposed to you know what i mean taking control of my life and doing the things that i need to do yeah so if anything it taught me what not to do and and father which is still a lesson i'd say yeah yeah a lesson nonetheless but mm-hmm. i don't want to talk down on the thing that i love you know yeah one of the things that i love in this world but uh i mean it's easy to harbor a lot of negative aspects of your life doing this shit mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it just taught me how to balance it out really yeah and and i think that there's some value to that maybe that was the secret answer that i wasn't expecting but um yeah i think a lot of you know, like hardcore live, the live community, all that shit is really, really great. But if you're using that as your escapism uh, from your regular life, like I I feel like finding that balance in between is, is almost necessary because I think it's very obvious when the yin and the yang. (laughs) Absolutely. The yin and the yang. That's right. Yeah. Like I have, I've had people come onto this podcast that like, you know, like they, are a teacher and they like you know mentor students and then they'll like flex on these music videos and write the hardest songs ever but they like having that balance and that degree of separation between so right um yeah it it doesn't matter if that's in your career or your family life but i i do agree there's something to be said where um you're having a, a like you can insert yourself and then you can essentially be removed and uh focus on the other things that are important to you as well uh just as equally right right mm-hmm. right yeah um so to to jump back to uh to Jesus peace stuff um you know it's you guys have like done a lot of different things and and we were talking about like Sonny and uh you know rolling with him like you guys have brought him out like doing some tours and stuff like that um I, I know that you guys did the uh, the the Cribs episode while you're in Japan. Yeah, I remember that right vividly. So, <laughs> uh, you know that was uh you know like I enjoyed watching that. I think it was like pretty hyped up when um when Sunny first did it. So the question the question remains: Will we ever get a Aaron in Philadelphia of your own? Cribs like my episode? real son, your actual Cribs, my real Cribs. <laughs> You know, I would do that, but I don't want to get fucking robbed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. I'm not. I'm not trying to pressure you now to like, you know, jump on it. MTV Cribs. Hey, y'all. What's up? Come rob me. These are the valuable things that I have in my personal home. This is where my child sleeps. Yeah. Let's (laughs) let's not put the the address or any of, of those things on there. Um, what would be like the one thing if if that video did see the light of day where you were like this is the 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 centerpiece or the the creme de la creme of uh of of stuff that you have in your house it doesn't necessarily need to be valuable but just like maybe something that means a lot to you oh the one thing i would show off mm-hmm. well, hell man i don't know uh probably my grandma's mirror <laughs> your grandma's mirror <laughs> Yeah, that's like the coolest thing I have, I think. Everything else is like stupid and replaceable for the most part. <laughs> Except for the, the my friend Alvin, he painted me a nice uh piece of art that's hanging up in here. That's not that's irreplaceable. He's this cool guy <clears throat> from Jakarta. Oh, I don't think he's even Jakarta, but he's from the area. Fucking he's from Bandung, I think. Oh okay. he painted that shit for me. That's cool. Really nice of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that's really awesome. And then I have that picture of the baby up there that I took that I would probably brag about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but outside of that, dude, yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I wouldn't really. I'd be like, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> here's a. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't really got anything to really. Like, this is my fat dog. Check her out, dude. 
give her a couple pads. Yeah, it would be Nothing interesting. Too exciting. Uh, if 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 Sonny what like stopped filming live sets and it was only hardcore cribs, you know, that was his thing. Like, it would be interesting some to see some of like the band houses or people that are like, yeah, this is a house, but it's also jam space downstairs or recording studio or things like that. So. Oh yeah, if I had like a cool ass house like that, I'd be like, hell yeah, check it out. <laughs> but I have like, I can show you like my little like my little amp set up over there if you want. Right. I got some guitars. <laughs> are we gonna hey, go? Yo, we're to my, gonna go mobile. I'm Aaron Hurd. Just welcome to my crib. <laughs> We're like we're fully we're getting not the full episode. This is the the pilot. Hey y'all, this is my little amp setup. I got some amps over here. What what do we got, Aaron? My, what are we cooking with? We got we got this Orange Pro Crush. It's pretty cool. It rocks. It's got some uh, Ziploc bags up top. There's, yeah, there's some Ziplocies over there. Those are for Ziploc. snacks for my child. Uh, there's some volume here. <laughs> This has got this built-in reverb in here, too. It's real nice. And then I got a little tiny terror over here. You already know what that gets into. And that kicks through this big old boy down here. Does it sound? And then does the it. amp sound better when it's sideways? Oh, 100%. Yeah, mm -hmm. most definitely. Okay, it's just tiny, wanted to clarify that. Make this up. Yo, and then I found this uh, custom cab on the side of the road. Uh, oh. One of these plush guys. That's yeah. interesting. And it was like... I found that in like two big ass PA speakers, but I sold them shits. Mm. I got some guitars and stuff, but I don't really want to get too into it. If anything, if they want to break in and steal some amps, they can. Take there, there's a, a lot of other time, places you know? where you could do that, you know, like a guitar store yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got some some fun stuff over there. Yeah, well, but, I appreciate the yeah, little. There's uh, your cribs episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I. That's I love doing the podcast this way where it's not like this very fancy like oh please be on a laptop because we get to do shit like that it's like take the phone yeah and, I wouldn't do it anyways I, I would definitely just do it on my phone <laughs> <laughs> yeah um you know since we're on the topic is there anyone within the hardcore scene specifically or you know we can just even say music scene where you would uh tune in for a cribs episode by like literally the sky's the limit as far as who you can name in hardcore or you know it could like be metal house? you know it could be like a whose house i'd want to see <laughs> yeah oh man who do i feel like is interesting and i want to see their home <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah i don't i really don't know man like i feel like everybody's house would probably look semi-similar you know what i mean <laughs> that's true I know. Um, That's the wife's like living in a shack or something. That should be shack. cool. So. <laughs> yeah, like a YouTube mud house or something. Mm. I like. Uh, I guess like they're a little outside of. Um, like they're more in like the the metal space. But um, Bobby, who plays guitar in Fit for a King, he is like mm. a plant dad. So he has his own like plant business. So I feel oh, like he oh. would have a huge, really ridiculously nicely set up house. Yeah. If I knew some fun facts or some shit, like I would, I'd be so down because you got the info. You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> that, that sounds cool. I would love to see that man told. You know what I mean? Maybe I'd tune into that guy. I'll just take that. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, speak, you know, I, I was trying to use that as a good segue into this next question. Um, you know, as far as What's very up? influential people in, uh, in crazy houses, can you tell me about the time that you were hanging out with Post Malone? <laughs> I'm sure you've been asked that more times than you can account for. I don't, I don't care about that. Okay. It was like, honestly, like, it was weird. Like, I, <laughs> it wasn't like weird. Like, it's weird because it happened. Like, uh, I'm not used to shit like that happening. You know what I mean? Mm. But the connection comes from a dude who used to sing in a metal band in Philly named Kyle Hedegaard. He's a tattoo artist. Okay. And he was tattooing Post Malone. I think he still does. Uh, and I guess he showed him us or something or some, at some point. And uh, after our L.A. show, we played like Union or something like that. And uh, he hit me up. was like, yo, uh, come, like long story short, short, here's the address. Come through at like three in the morning. <laughs> and uh, I was with like one of our friends and Anthony. And I was like, Hey, 
yo, I know it's kind of late, and you guys probably don't want to do anything, but... <laughs> this is the thing that you might want to do. Po- <laughs> like, yeah, the like, Post Malone just, like, sent that as us, yeah. But, like, I didn't even talk to him directly at first. You know what I mean? Like, I met him when we got to the house. He was really, really cool, like, incredibly hospitable. You know, we busted it up, talked about music. Mm. Like, he let me play as, like, Louis V, like, covered Telecaster. It was insane. I can't play guitar for shit, by the way. So I was just standing there like an asshole, just holding this oh, thing in front no. of all these people. <laughs> in front of all these people, they're all looking at me like, he's a musician, like, play something. And I was like, burn, 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 smoke on the water just in a guitar center badly is one thing, but in Post Malone's house... With him as the audience, oh man, the pressure would be on for sure. Like, play a riff, man. No, You're there like, was bad people fuck. there too. There was other people there that I never met, and I'm like, yeah, they probably think my band fucking sucks. <laughs> but no, nah, he, he played guitar. It was really cool. And we were talking like he had a bunch of you know guitar cases there. He pulled out this like Music Man from the fucking '80s Stingray. We were talking about it, and he goes, "Oh, that dude plays bass for your band." I'm like, "Yeah, Anthony, right there." He goes. Hey, you want this bass? <laughs> and I remember looking like, I fucking play bass too, fool. <laughs> Let me get that shit. He straight up gave Anthony this fucking music band, yo. Straight. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't believe it. So, we just hung out. We like showed, showed him some music, like Power Trip and stuff. He was hella nice. Mm-hmm. And then we left. Do, do, so do you think about that moment as far as like, if I played the guitar a little bit better, maybe he would, would have given that bass to me? No, no, no. I don't think like that, though. No. Yeah, but, that's fair. No, nah, he's all right, man. I mean, any a couple of times he's come to Philly, I went and chilled over there, and just kind of like busted up. You know, mm-hmm. and keep it moving. Yeah, won't, won't bother the dude too much for nothing. Yeah, I and and even just the the timing of when I saw that photo, um, of just like, you know, I I think he had like just put out his first album, so like you know the his awareness was just starting to build even then it was like Mm. oh he's this big like you know like hip-hop star but now he's like oh you were like in the leagues of all the top of all the top people within that genre but it is you know it's just one of those things that like anytime it's your birthday i see anthony posting that photo i'm just like it's just so (laughs) crazy to see (laughs) it's it's definitely one of those moments that like I'm just like, I live in a simulation. Like, this is fucked up. I don't really know what's going on anymore. Right. Like, I definitely am just feeling like that in general now. It's like, mm. anything could happen. Like, I don't know. What's up? <laughs> I saw you crack your second Bev. Do you want to give that a, oh, yeah. a debut? So, uh, this is an Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Nice. I uh, I was lucky enough to come across a bunch of uh, free cases of all this stuff. Oh. So to be honest, I'm just kind of drinking what's here. <laughs> it's it's not like uh, curated by Aaron. It's like no, no it this isn't free. like uh, a palette thing. This is just kind of like a uh, uh, saving money is the move. <laughs> I I hundred percent feel that like majority of the bev like the amount of bev money that I've saved because of having bev sponsors for this show like is immense. So. I, How many Bev sponsors do you have? Let's get into it. I have now two. I want to know the numbers too. Mm-hmm. So you got the chai joint, and then what's the other? One? Uh so there's a brewery here in Calgary called New Level. Um, so they okay. do uh a, a ton of different um crazy kind of beers. So like everything from like your your standard kind of pale ale. Let's see if I got. Okay, you're gonna they hang got any on. Pilsners and shit. I don't know if they. I think that they do have a pilsner. Those are good pills. But um, they like I think the the area where they excel is like their sours. So they have like a blue raspberry lemonade sour that has been like absolutely killer. Um, there's a. You want to tell? I got a story about the last time I drank a sour beer. If you want to hear it, <laughs> sure. Yeah, please. Do you know the band Adalia by chance? Dal like Dahlia. Adalia. Oh, uh, Adalia. Adalia. Yes, I know that name. It was yeah. like a Florida Florida metal band. Um, the singer Tyler is a friend of mine, and he works at a like a brewery in Tampa. Sure. And we were down there, FYA, of course, like everyone's wilding out. I'm like, I'm going to go to this fucking brewery, you know? And 
they're all like, yo, let's shotgun a pounder. Are you down? I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm down. You know what I mean? Sure. It was a pounder of sour beer, so I just kind of threw it up immediately. <laughs> all, oh. over this, all over the brewery floor. Like, I just... <laughs> I just left afterwards. I just <laughs> You're like, uh, hey, thanks. I'll I'll see ya. <laughs> yeah, it's been great kicking it with y'all. I gotta get going. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any sour beers are probably not to be slammed in one go. It's a uh, to 100%, be enjoyed, yeah. you know, throughout. Not just like, oh yeah, I can I, I can uh I can do this in one shot. No worries. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have done it had I known. However, you know, that's just the way she goes sometimes, man. So so you're doing that, and is it like the second it hits your lips, you're like, oh, this is not like some kind of lager or pale ale. This is like a little... I'd say like like two sucks in, I knew it was not my regular Tuesday afternoon. But you, but you were like, I'm committed to uh, to doing this. Yeah, I was in it already, dude. Yeah. And it was it. I did not pan out well for me, and I did not have a good time. But I wanted to at least finish the beer just in case I did make it out of there. Yeah, no. That's fair. Should, you know, yeah, really. it, it, it's one thing to be like saying, "Oh, we drank this beer and threw up." But uh, do you know the brewery? If we wanted to just quickly plug that, plug that. No, I don't. Uh, okay, <laughs> I, I wish I did. Hope someone watching knows and we can put like a, a something in there, something mm-hmm. later. It's in, and it's in Tampa, right? Tampa, yeah. It's like right off like the Ebor Main Street. Okay. Well, if you're from Tampa or, or anywhere in Florida, you've been there, you can comment comment it below. Uh, I'm sure the beer is good. It's not like a, you know, it's yeah, not it's like probably, a <laughs> The beer, it went down deliciously. It just came up a little rough. That's all. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's all I think. <laughs> I love it. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any other favorite breweries that you've hit while you're while you've been on tour? Um, you know, I haven't done many breweries uh, almost ever because I, I stray away from the beer. I, I feel like shit after drinking it; it's super bloated. Sure. So I just kind of drink whatever else. I'm like a mixed drink guy for the most part. Got gotcha. you. Like a nice cocktail. Mm. Mm. What's like the go-to Aaron cocktail of choice? Okay, well, if anything, I'm going to get myself an old-fashioned. That's, like, a, my thing. I'm a whiskey guy. Mm. Uh, but if I'm outside, if I'm drinking a little clear and I'm out getting crazy, uh, I'll do, like, a gin and soda with a lime, you know? Or if I'm out dancing, I get a tequila pineapple. Oh, Ooh. okay. You you have drinks per activity, it sounds like. I do. I do. Yeah, you got to have a good loadout. You mm. know what I mean? It's important. So... Okay, so that begs the question, what's like the Jesus Peace cocktail that you would drink before Jesus Peace set? And what's the nothing cocktail that you would drink before one of those sets? Well, I would not drink before a Jesus Peace set because okay. I've done that. And so it'd be like something non-alcoholic probably. Yeah, I wouldn't even. Last time I tried to take a shot of whiskey before the set and I I made it to the last word of the last song and I had to run off stage and throw up in the back. It wasn't like altoona pennsylvania or some shit okay like, somewhere like <laughs> but I, I i would never do it again after that i really played myself but no uh before no, nothing nothing shows is i don't really think there is like a curated cocktail that you could put into into a category which sounds so dark honestly but yeah <laughs> it really is whatever's around when we're around you know what i mean mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, something, you know, when I was prepping for this podcast, like there's a ton, you know, you, we were talking even a little bit earlier about like the very first, um, you know, Jesus, Jesus show that you guys didn't even have like a name for. And you're like, oh, like looking, looking back at that, it's like definitely seen the, the progression of how you carry yourself as a vocalist. Um, so I guess I want to ask you like, like, has that been, in your opinion, just the amount of shows that you guys have played to like actually like figure out how you want to be a performer and like, you know, be entertaining and all those kind of things? Or has it just been like uh, someone specifically or seeing a certain uh, other front person live where you're like, oh, I understand it now. Like, wh- where's your mind go with that? 
No, I think it more so like I, for one, I had to stop turning around or turn around a lot, show my back to the crowd and stuff. Like, you got to get in it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think like it's just so, more so like, you know, washing away any kind of stage anxiety. The more you do it, the more comfortable you feel there. You know what I mean? Totally. So like now, like I feel like I step out there. I'm like, what the hell? I, mean? <laughs> I played good ones. I played bad ones. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Like I'm here. Mm-hmm. And that's what really helps. Like, but initially, like I was, I had a lot of anxiety about playing. I wanted it to be good. I wanted everyone to see it. I wanted everyone to be comfortable and have a good time. But I don't, I don't fucking care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I just go. I walk. I gotta just like tune myself out totally. Just like tap into another space, and I just go. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I just make sure I don't turn my back to the crowd. Mm-hmm. that's yeah. like my one thing yeah, yeah it's very important Until to be like, like up front in people's faces yeah. you know that's you know yeah. what hardcore is um but i do right. i do that I, like idea that you were saying is like instead of being like concerned about like how you are how your band is or even how the crowd is you're just like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do my thing and stay in my lane and focus on what i'm doing and that's right. kind of it right mm-hmm. i mean at the end of the day with the band, like when you get up there, you want to assume that everybody is equipped to do what they're supposed to do, you know, on their own level. You know what I totally. mean? And if I go up there and I'm not worried about what I'm doing, I'm not focusing on what I'm doing or focusing or just making sure I'm like being myself as much as I could possibly be myself in that moment. Like I know that that's my role when I'm there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Totally. I don't want to worry about what everybody else is doing. And I don't think they want to worry about what everyone else is doing. Everyone wants to focus, you know what I mean? So like, it, it goes well, you know, and JP's always really had that, like, you know, it's, it, we've been blessed with that because we're all, you know, we dial in pretty easily once we play with each other a couple of times, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah, I don't know, man. People sometimes worry too much about what's going on around them when they're playing. Yeah. You can tell yeah like like some like and and to be fair there are definitely times where like you know if a vocalist is being you know jumped on the middle of the set like a little too much it it becomes a little problematic or like you know i I, i've seen it where guitar players have been like full-on just like bumped while they're playing like more than just like the little nudge so there is a fine line with that but um to be honest i don't i don't hate that necessarily though like i've never been knocked over playing or some shit like that and i've been like mad like i might like swing in the direction but that's just like adding to the mix like i'm not actually gonna punch the dude you know yeah but no i mean i think that that that's what makes hardcore shows hardcore shows is the interaction between you know band and people i mean mm-hmm. not that necessarily what makes a hardcore show a hardcore show but right like, i think it's what makes it fun you know what i mean like yeah. i don't i don't want to play a show where everyone's standing around like the people are running on jumping off the shit and i'm like dipping and dodging and singing like that's fun for me yeah I like that. And, and like you were saying like it's um that lesson of like just like always moving forward and not being so worked up on the actual like problems of just right. like oh my guitar got unplugged or my cable like someone spilled beer on my nah. pedal board we're going nah, direct in it. or like you know get it right just, back in there yeah yeah it's it's this like you know and, and that's even someone like watching the band like hey maybe i'm gonna you know the drummer's cymbal fell off i'm gonna go run in and do it like there's never like a who's the designated person it's like who's gonna take it upon themselves to uh go to, help yeah yeah go help for sure I mean, like some people do, and I mean, even like bands on tour, like it's always someone's around to keep an eye on everybody's shit, which is cool, you know. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That's what I missed about touring. It's like the homies. <laughs> yeah, the homies helping you out. Um, the homies, yeah. homies out there, homies. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I know with the Jesus Peace live show experience. Um, you know, I, I've I've watched a number of different sets of you guys and, and gotten to see you guys live um, for Wild Rose. Um, and something that I've always noticed is that you guys are very intentional about, like, not playing to your recordings 100% of the time. Like, there are definitely... Yeah, we like that shit. Yeah, there's definitely times where it's like, oh, like, it's almost not jarring, but it's, like, interesting in a way where it's like, I'll hear a song uh, in a live set or when I saw it live, 
And it's like, I actually prefer this way more than the recording. So when, when did you guys take that yeah. <laughs> into account or at least like make that change? Because I think a lot of people can get stuck to like, this is the way we recorded it. So it must be played this way. <laughs> I mean, people always forget that playing live and, and live shows are unique experiences. You know what I mean? Totally. And you're never going to play the same every fucking night anyway. Totally. So, yeah. Like, and our work, it doesn't need to be absolute, you know what I mean? Just because it's on the recording, cool, they have that recording, but, like, we're still fucking variables here, man. Like, we're all wild cards. We could do whatever we want to do, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think even then, like, it gives something else to the live show to want to be there for, too, you know what I mean? Like, we're going to get a little crazy sometimes, switch it up. Yeah, yeah. And I, th- <laughs> I think it just, like, helps – instead of um, time stamping that song, it like kind of shows that the songs can evolve, you know, four five, six years after you guys have released, right. you know, the split or- And not for nothing, man, like playing the same songs, especially if you're listening to the recordings and you're like, ah, fuck, I could have did that differently. Like, mm-hmm. just play it differently live. You still play this shit anyway. Yeah, totally. You don't have to just yeah. like uh, shelf that song and be like, oh, I'm never going to play this live. It's like, maybe you just play right. that breakdown a little bit slower or like- Right, beef it up put some double kick behind yourself yeah i mean <laughs> wrap it out what's Anything. your what's your favorite like um song that you guys have changed in a live setting um compared to uh the recording because there's like an actual a good amount of songs that you guys have really uh spiced it up like, for lack of a better yeah, fucked around with, uh, mm-hmm. um i think uh Maybe sinking, I would assume. Like yeah. Lewis, Lewis gets a little crazy on the feet sometimes on that shit. <laughs> I love it. Like that's like, I'm always jazzed up whenever he starts hitting shit like that because I'm always like pushing for more death metal esque drums. Like I'm like a, a heavy drums type dude. Totally. And I love grooving and shit, but like crushing drums is like it gets me fired up when I'm singing. I'm like, ah, and like. <laughs> Sometimes he'll do some shit and I won't even see it coming. You know what I mean? It'll just get me like real fired up. I'll get like, I'll be gassed, like super tired. And then he'll do some shit like that. And I'll be like, oh, totally. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. Yeah. Be, no, sorry. To be able to, um, to do that, eat, like, you know, I had band practice last night and just like seeing my drummer do like something that, again, like you were saying, unexpectedly, that amps me up to like, want to do my shit better and then it's just like this constant cycle between the band that again gets cycled with the live energy of the show and it becomes right man you feel that's the the best part about being in a fucking band you know what i mean (laughs) like in the age of recording everything like the aspect of jam gets lost sometimes Hmm. it's there to change up it's there to fuck around and evolve while you're doing it over and over and over again you know what i mean Totally. That's how your songs become your songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and like you said, like being able to have like, I, I, I'm really curious if like when Jesus Peace is like, you know, going back on tour and, you know, there's certain times where, you know, you guys are able to, um, hey, I know that we've been doing this part this way live, but like, you know, check this out. And it's like totally flipping the switch on something com- completely different. Yeah, it usually happens, like, last second, kind of like that. <clears throat> it's like, yo, let's do it this way. It's like, all right, sick. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, like, I, I can follow the music. You know, I've been doing this shit since 2010, 2011. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, at least doing vocals and, and you know, following songs at this point. Like, I can, I'll vibe over anything if it's gone. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll catch the beat as soon as it starts happening, as long as I can hear what's happening. Sure. Yeah. Um, but. you know, I, I, I've started to ask this question to a couple people um who come on the podcast who have been in bands that are like a little bit bigger but have been been playing for a long time because I, I think that is a thing where like certain songs are like, you know, without like spicing it up in that live setting, it, it could almost become like more of a chore to play that song because it maybe it is a fan favorite versus, you know, I actually like that song. Oh um yeah that's always gonna happen though you know what i mean yeah so that always happens so i was gonna ask you like what in your opinion is the most underrated jesus peace song and what is the most overrated jesus peace song oh shit 
<laughs> and, and, and those aren't to say those songs are 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 good or bad. It's just like for you specifically as the vocalist, you wish that you guys had more opportunities to play X song more or maybe cut out that one song that you're playing a little too much, in your opinion. Uh, an underrated track, maybe not the most, but a definitely underrated track that I wish we did play is In the Silence, actually. Oh, okay. That's an interesting pick. It's the slower song on the, uh-huh. on the record, but we're usually so go, 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 go. But I think if we like opened with that one day or some shit or like did like a live session with it, mm-hmm. just to like give somebody a live taste of what's happening on that song. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think Adamant's a sleeper on the record just because it's just like a total banger. You know what I mean? Like it's for the moshers. <laughs> <laughs> But the songs that I wanted to hit on the record hit, you know what I mean? Like, Curse of the Serpent's good, you know, Punish is a hit. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with how that went. Uh, the songs on the uh, Mouse of the Palace split, they're both pretty good, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, my favorite stuff is definitely on Only Self, 100%. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's crazy because, like, looking at that album, like, it still feels like um like 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 there's a lot of people still sharing that and but you know it's getting up to that point where it's almost like that record is like for sure three almost four years old now so like um yeah (laughs) you know obviously you guys have like done your due and you know there's pandemic time that's been added to that so like where your yeah. where is your guys is i think you know it, it's funny that you were mentioning a little earlier how uh how dave was calling you because i think i saw on his instagram today like of you guys working on some new stuff so obviously i'm sure there's only yeah. bits and pieces that you can share but you know looking at this we're in the studio in september okay sick <laughs> that's very awesome yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and september is the studio what is I guess like, you know, I think only self was like a really breakout record for you guys. So like, you know, is there a little bit of extra pressure now off of like, okay, now we're doing another full length to, to try and, um, not like top only self, but at least be as good as, uh, as that, like, where does your, where's well, yeah, your head that's at? A, that's a given, you know, I mean? no one wants to put out a record worse than their last record. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, I mean, outside of wanting to do better than the last time you did some shit, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, we want to fucking, we want the record to crush. We want things to go well. Like, we didn't tour really in America on Only Self. I don't think we did like the headlines at all. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, we, we I'm played trying to think back outside. to. Uh... No, we didn't. We didn't do any headliner on the record. I was hmm. super busy with nothing. And, and, we did a lot of shit outside of the country, but we really neglected playing America. So hmm. when this next one drops, we got to give home a lot of love. You know totally. I mean? Yeah. So this next record, it'll just, I mean, it'll be fucking Jesus. For you, huh? <laughs> we don't really. <laughs> yeah. I, f- I feel like you guys have really carved out your own lane as far as sonically how you guys sound and, and showcasing the different things that you can do outside of like your, you know, you can't just say Jesus Peace is like uh, this kind of like subgenre kind of band because I think you guys are able to play in some other aspects that showcase that show that are definitely showcased on 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 Only Self. For sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's probably my favorite part about being in the band is the versatility and where we can go with things. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Play all kinds of shit. Um. So, you know, as we start to wrap up the show here, Aaron, um, I'm, I'm having flashbacks yeah. to that Wild Rose 2019, 2019 set. Uh, I watched, yeah. I was watching it and uh, what, one of my favorite moments is you were, you were like, this next one is, uh, is going to go out to Canadian weed because you were just like uh, apparently really messing with yeah. the, uh, the Canadian weed that, that you were um, <laughs> partaking. So I was, I was going to ask- forget about that weed. Oh well, yeah. Maybe you can tell me how how good or 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 why you'll never forget about it. You know, someone I just we got there I think a day early, uh-huh. and I was at the pre-show over at a bar like right around the corner from our hotel. Yeah, and I just went to hang out, and someone just hooked me up straight up it's like, "Yo, it's for you." It was the most purple weed I ever seen in my life. It was like the color of my shirt, straight up. 
And I was like, thank you, guy. Because I was, like, stressed a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> looking for weed. And, uh, no, it was incredible. It, it did its job. Didn't take much. I was a fan immediately. Mm-hmm. And I remember playing Wild Rose Fest because that's the last time I'll ever wear Doc Martens playing a fest in my fucking life. <laughs> I was ready to throw up like halfway through the set. So I was what? trying to jump. I was like, oh my God, this is rough. You yeah. Know? Like, but I made it through, you know, but I learned a lesson that day. And mm-hmm. it's to never wear fucking big old Doc Martens and play a set. Yeah, they're just some sporty. A little too heavy. Way too heavy, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just off that sentiment, I was going to ask you if, like, I don't know if that takes the cake for like the best um touring slash weed experience for you but I'm, I'm curious if there's been any um bad uh weed experiences while being on tour uh that you can yeah. tell as well <laughs> yes <Yeah>, so many <laughs> <laughs> too many really uh yeah i have three in mind and i'll keep them quick sure. uh one was getting weed outside of a venue in berlin and they gave it to me and I didn't look at it, assuming that it would probably be weed. And it was like, it might, it may as well have been a bag of rocks, honestly. It was rough. Oh, jeez. I, I tried, and it still was not fun. It sucked so bad. Uh, never do that again. Okay. Two uh, was in Stockholm, Sweden, maybe. Okay. And... Uh, there's this place, Christiania, where, like, you know, you can get weed or whatever. And uh, a guy, a straight-edge dude, brought me weed from Christiania, <laughs> Christiania or whatever. And it was just, like, CBD weed straight up. It was it was pretty crazy. We were laughing pretty hard about it. Mm, uh, okay. And uh, the third time was, uh, I probably shouldn't say where it was, but <laughs> someone, brought, someone brought me weed, and I smoked it, and I... I honestly, it had to be laced with something because I was like loopy for an entire like six hour drive. Oh no. So, that was like the worst one ever. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has, yeah. Like it, like just having filmed a, a fest in, um, in California just a couple of weekends ago, like that was a thing where like a lot of bands were like, shout out to all the people that brought us weed. I was like, is that just like the thing to do for any big touring band that's coming through is just like bring them the local strain or, or whatever it is. Not even the local strain, just hook it up. You just know hook it mean? up. Because, I mean, a big part of my day, I get to the city, I'm like, all right, now I got to find weed. Like, my Instagram's always like, yo, Cleveland, where the weed at? Or like, some shit like that. Where the weed at? Where the weed at? Yeah. This saves me all the trouble. Mm-hmm. But I definitely, like, need to cut back on everything for a while. <laughs> like, I feel that. I have I got been some focusing to do. I have been telling people, like, when I go to festivals to film or, like, if my band is coming through, like, I like for me, it's not weed. It's, like, bring me the local bev- bevs that, that you want. Yeah, the bevs. Yeah, bring, bring me some beers. That. Bring me some, um, you know, some local sparkling waters, some local energy drinks, like, anything that's fancy. Like, let's all bring What's a your beer? Cream. What What do you – when you ask, what are you really asking for? For, for, like, for a beer, like an alcohol? Yeah, where you're like, yo, bring me some bevs. What are you, like, waiting for the message for, like? The one that's gonna get you stoked up the most. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think like definitely through New Level, I really like a lot of the sours that they have. But I, oh, what was that one? I just had really recently. Um, I I think if it's multiple, having something yeah. like uh like something White Claw esque is um. Like not a white cloth right. specifically, but if there's something that's a little bit more nicher than that, um, yeah, some light, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. That I can have like one or two. Um, you know, it's uh, it's definitely like sometimes when I'm filming so many bands, it's like so go go go. So I only think about like you know enjoying something at the very end of like the 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 night of filming. Um, All right. If it's non alcoholic, it's definitely like bring me a bring me a coffee 
like bring me a dirty chai with some oat oh oh let's go yeah yeah that's that's, that's my, my fucking shit, drink man. right there yeah we'll definitely i always um, get like soy milk or coconut milk we'll definitely get you hooked up with some of this man because i think it's uh yeah more people need to know about it so um yeah, tell them to holler at me. definitely um you know not to, <laughs> to keep asking you bev questions but um if there was a beverage sponsor that you could have for both of your bands where's your mind go with that like you would have to group them both at the same time like you... no you could have them individually because i'm sure like the, the really? drinks for you know there's a couple like straight edge folk within jesus piece so maybe not having a beer for that band but yeah where, where's your mind go yeah probably i'd say for jesus piece, probably like a, a yerba mate mm. shit. okay just so everyone can stay fired up when we drive and shit dave Dave loves driving. He's like a driving fool. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So we can have him jacked up at all times. That's like best case scenario. Just like the t- yeah. the the hat with the the drinks on the <laughs> side. It's just your <laughs> <thumbs up. laughs> The straw. Yeah, out. totally. Uh, and then I guess for nothing, your beverage is probably like I don't know, like IV bags because hydration <laughs> or something. I think that there's a um, hospital <laughs> IV bags just rolling in on stage with, like <laughs> all set up. No, I don't know. Like uh, we, I mean, Nikki and I be drinking beer and shit. I'll be drinking beer. Mm. Uh, we probably don't probably like Jameson liquor or something like that. It's probably <laughs> like our most abused one or something. I think that's the untapped area of like bands doing drink collabs with people. Like when yeah, I had like, like martin from from terror on like he yeah. was apparently very close like he's got hookups through monster and there was talks for one time to do a terror monster energy drink that would have been crazy dude martin's a fucking man you know for yeah, real absolutely um well aaron i i would love to talk bevs with you for the next hour but i want to be sensitive of your time <laughs> and uh really appreciate you coming on the podcast the very last question that i'll ask you and they ask all my guests at the very end of every episode is a favorite mosh yeah. story that they would like to end on. So it doesn't oh, necessarily God. need to be like funny, gruesome, you did it, it happened to you, whatever's like the first thing to your head is how we kind of end the show. Oh no, I've got a million of those, man. I know. Uh, <laughs> There's <laughs> many of those that have become viral as well. So, you know, I, uh, you know. Obviously, if you want to pick one of those, that's fine. But if there's one that's like a little bit nicher that uh, maybe you haven't told before, that's also sick. Probably my one of my most embarrassing moments in my fucking life. Uh, it was the first day we got to Japan, our first Japanese tour. And uh, I think like Blindside USA was playing and I moshed for maybe like five seconds. I ended up kicking my friend in his jaw and like splitting the front of his jaw. Oh, no. He had to go to the hospital and stuff. And I just felt like such a piece of shit like the whole day. He ended up coming back to the show and stuff. And we were playing. I brought him out on stage. It's like, my man. <laughs> yeah. my man. Like, I just, I still, I still feel fucking a horrible about it. Ever since then, I'm like, I don't really think I should be moshing like that, man. I just took like a big old step back. That's my least favorite my story. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the one that first came to mind. <laughs> yeah, because like, I still feel so guilty about it today. Like, <laughs> they're going to like, buy some ice cream or something. I yeah, know. maybe you need to give him a call. I was like, hey, man, I just uh, I was talking about you on this podcast. And, uh, you know, can oh. I ven- Venmo you some money for some ice cream today? <laughs> Every time I see him, I just give him a big ass hug. That's fair. I'm sorry. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, you he know, made care. for a good story at, at the very mm-hmm. least. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I All the other stories, like, I don't know, just acting crazy, doing spin kicks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's a great one to end on, in my opinion. Um, Aaron, yeah. again, appreciate having you on. Um, it sounds like there's some things coming down the pipe for Jesus Peace, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, obviously, nothing's been doing a lot of really cool stuff as well um so all your band links and all that kind of shit is going to be in the description and in the show notes but if there's anything that you want to plug shout out send the people off with before we wrap up officially the floor is yours my guy uh 
JP's in the studio soon. Uh, nothing's got shit popping up soon. Uh, <laughs> nothing goes on tour in October through America if they actually let it happen. So okay. buy a bunch of tickets and shit. Is that uh, announced already? Yeah. Oh, it's, okay. uh, it's nothing. Frankie Rose and Unimclaw. Unimclaw. Okay. Might have fucked up the name, so I apologize if I have. Um, uh, I'll be on Twitch playing video games. Uh, Aaron Hurd is just the name, twitch.tv slash Aaron Hurd. You can watch me get my ass whipped a bunch of times. Uh, oh, uh, I have this other band called Action News I play bass for. Yeah, you guys have a first show um, coming up, I saw. Yeah, our first show is happening September 17th. Uh, it's going to be at the Grace Ferry Skate Park with a bunch of sick-ass bands. So uh, It'll be the Chemical Fix uh, LP release show as well. Very sick. Shout Very sick band yeah. as well. You should get Mikey on this podcast if you haven't yet. He's a psycho. Dude, uh, vocalist or is someone else of that band? He's a guitarist. Okay. Michael he is the most interesting man in the world. He's got the craziest stories to tell. I'll I'll have to hit him up because I always like to say things on the podcast and then they become things on on future episodes. So yeah, yeah, this is definitely fucked with that man. So I'm into that. This is me harassing you in the DMs to interview <laughs> my friend. <laughs> and now after this podcast wraps up, Aaron's gonna pull out his DMs with not fast. He's like, I got something to say to you. <laughs> Yeah, listen up, not listen fast. Up. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, shout out, not fast. We shout out, not all. fast. That's right. Shout out, slip not. Just bullshit. Um, um, what's the last thing? Uh, la, 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 la. yeah, I don't know. I got nothing else, man. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me, dude. It's of, been a blast. Of course, yeah. This has been really, really fun, man. And uh, yeah, excited for all the things that are coming down the pipe for you. And uh, thank you of course. to the audience. Sorry for wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> 